Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. Uh, this uh, next segment is going to combine uh, some joy and a little bit of pain as well. Uh, one of my dear friends, his name was Tom Porton, uh, passed away this week. He is a legendary teacher, former New York City school teacher at James Monroe High School, the former James Monroe, which was eventually split up into other schools. And he was dearly loved by his students and colleagues and everything else. So we found two of his students from way back when. I don't even <laughs> want to count the number of years. So we'll say, and I got to get their names right because I knew them when they had different names. It is Janelle Roundtree. Nice to see you, Janelle. Nice to see you too. Thank you. And um, uh, also uh, Sarah Mejia. Uh, Sarah, Gary. so nice to see you. <laughs> you too, um, um, the, the reason we kind of knew each other is that, and we're going to show you, I did a news story about Tom Porton in the 90s when BronxNet first started, and both of these young women were in that story or other stories, whatever. Anyway, Janelle, let's just start with you. Remember um, uh, Tom Porton for us. Um, quirky man. <laughs> um but um, he was instrumental um, in my life in high school. Um, I often, I can't tell my story without including him in it um, because he just really uh, was that teacher that guided me along uh, through all four years. Um, he introduced me to the HIV AIDS prayer education program and he was like uh, my cheerleader cheering me on, guiding me um, to the point where I was able to get um, scholarships to attend um, Howard University and um, was able to receive other awards, but it would have been none of that um, without um, his support and his influence. Um, and I'm glad that um, I was able to continue uh, my relationship um, with him until the end. Like, like, in a way, like all of us, and I, I know I visited him once, and um, students, former students were coming by, many of them uh, professional people like you are. So what, what do you do now? After Howard University, what did you end up doing with, with the rest of your life? Well, now I'm an HR uh, professional. I work for uh, one of uh, the prominent um, health insurance um, organizations in uh, New York City. And so I've yep. been doing HR for over 20 years now. And, and you have family? Yes. So I'm married well, and I have two children. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> um, and and um, I, I'm going to go to Sarah and then I'm going to ask you each this follow-up question. So Sarah, who I knew as Sarah Clement, um, yes. you you are going to be, you're in one of the videos we're, we're going to show. Um, tell, tell me what Tom meant to you and what he did for you when you were a high school student at well, James Monroe High School in the 90s. Mrs. Porton made zero period fun. <laughs> no one wants to get up and go to school early in the morning, especially at 7 a.m. But Mr. Porton, uh, he was a man who, you know, not only stimulated your love for learning, but he also stimulated your other senses because he would take us, you know, to different uh, restaurants where we have uh, cuisine in different uh, uh, countries. For instance, we would go to Japanese restaurants, Indian restaurants. Uh, we would go to uh, different places where, you know, your, your taste buds were stimulated, your eyes were stimulated when you went to uh, the Broadway performances that we... Now, I, I was going to interject because I know he took so many students to see Broadway shows. I think his vision was he understood what it was like to grow up in the Bronx. Absolutely. And many of the young people don't get the opportunity to see exactly. the world. So he taught Absolutely. you about food. He right. taught you about all that. So he, here's my follow-up um, to Janelle. And I will ask you the same thing, Sarah. Um what, um, oh, geez, we're going to run out of time very quickly. Mm -hmm. What um, did uh, uh, um, he actually do that um, Janelle was just talking about that, mm -hmm. that changed your life, aside from the activities? Um, go ahead. Well, you know, when I uh, first applied to colleges, I didn't get accepted to not one of the colleges I applied to. It was about 12 different colleges. And he knew that I wanted to go away for school. I didn't want to stay local because I wanted to kind of find myself on my own without, you know, being at right. home and commuting back and forth. So he said, Sarah, why don't you look at this college? Uh, this paper just came in 
And it was Marymount College in Terrytown, New York. It was an all women's college. Right. I, and I said, you know, I was hesitating at first because I said, oh, all women. But I was so interested in living off campus. So when I applied, I was accepted. So um, it's a, that, I, I, I do want to move on because I don't want to run out of time. I want to okay. be able to show this piece. But that that changed your life. I it mean, changed that, my that... life because um, my roommate was there when I met my husband and I was with my roommate from there college. You go. So, it, so, you know, he poured into my future. And tell, tell me, tell me about your family. Oh, I have my husband, um, Santana Mejia and four children. So we've been married for 24 years. And, and <laughs> much like Janelle, you can't think of getting where you are without that. Janelle answer real quickly. What was it that he actually did that inspired you so well, aside from all the things you did? Um, he took, he spent time with us. He took time and um, he exposed us to uh, different things. And he gave the, you know, that, that advice, that guidance um, that um, we, we often needed uh, right. to be able to move forward in our lives. Uh, okay. Here it is. This is Gary Atzelbank on Bronxnet in 1994, I think 1995. Uh, let's take a look. For James Monroe High School's Tom Porton, the craft of teaching goes far beyond standing in front of a class. Oh, as an English teacher, he's been in front of many classes since he came to Monroe in 1968. But it's the world that he's opened up for his students that have taken this short, bearded man from the Bronx all the way to Emporia, Kansas, as the first New York City teacher selected for the four-year-old National Teachers Hall of Fame. I would have been just one of those kids that sat in the corner and never did anything, just worried about my schoolwork. But Mr. Point is like, when I'm here with him, I'm outgoing. I go, you know, I do, I do things, you know, and I'm always involved in school activities. When I came to the school, I really didn't have a high self-esteem. Like, my father just died, and I was going through a lot of things at my home. And then I met him, and I was... My life changed because he introduced me to so many different things. Tom is so special. The theme of our school, if you will, is James Monroe High School, where dreams become reality. And Tom is one of the reasons why youngsters' dreams are realized. There were some people at, at Monroe who told me, don't go there. You're going to be weighing over your head. And Tom Porton said, that's great. You know, why not Harvard? <laughs> If you want to follow Tom Porton around during a school day at Monroe, you'd better bring your track shoes. For one, the phone never stops ringing in his crowded, noisy fifth floor office, which is usually bustling with activity. On this day, it's baskets of love, which are toiletries and candies sent to hundreds of AIDS patients throughout New York City hospitals. And along with the goods, which sadly are luxury items for many terminal AIDS patients, Tom's HIV AIDS peer education students teach other Monrovians about AIDS and inspire them to write personalized letters of encouragement that are included in each basket of love. By the way, under Tom's guidance, this award-winning AIDS peer education group has brought AIDS prevention information to Bronx street corners and has commandeered all of the city's high schools in annual AIDS awareness conferences. So with Baskets of Love production in full swing, Tom is off to the next project. He hauls the TV roll around to the first floor auditorium where he helps set up the special educational dramatic production that he's arranged for Monroe students on this day. And then, on his way back upstairs, Tom pauses to advise a colleague. And then, it's a few moments to work on the scenery for the school's upcoming production of a modern Cinderella play that Tom and his students have written. In a flash, Tom is off to check on how his AIDS peer education students are doing in the classroom. And then it's back to the auditorium to get the day's performance underway. And then on the way back to the office, when the elevator operator has taken an early lunch break, of course, it's Tom Porton, who happens to have the right key and gets the show on the road. Tom Porton has been the heart and soul of Monroe for the last 25 years. The interest he puts into his children is so unique that I have never found anybody else who has such a commitment to the kids, and to everything that goes on about the school. Just stepping into his shoes for two days, I was exhausted. <laughs> so I don't know how he does it. Tom Porton was an English major at New York University, where he also got his master's. Selected as Monroe High School's first coordinator of student affairs when the concept was established by the Board of Ed in 1971, 
Tom boasts of having created the city's first ever high school street fair, which cleaned up a drug-infested alleyway near the school. But aside from the years of teaching students to work for their communities, which has catapulted students like Sofia Quintero to important careers as public service executives, Tom has turned youngsters' lives around, sometimes by saving them. I remember one young lady whose name I, I won't mention on camera, in 1975, who, during a rehearsal of one of my shows, climbed up on the catwalk backstage and threatened to jump off because she was so depressed. And for an hour, I was talking her, trying to talk her down. And today, she's a lawyer. When I was just depressed at any given time, he would be there in my sad times. He would be there in my happy times. You know, we would laugh together. Or when I'm sad, he would help me or console me or um, get into contact with my mother or whatever. But whatever he had to do, he'll do it to make me happy. He makes students independent. He showcases their talents. He brings success to them. He's just the best. He will go a hundred miles, not nine yards, to do anything he can so that a youngster reaches his or her potential. He is truly the quintessential person as well as educator. I love Tom Porton. Congratulations to Tom Porton for being named into the National Teachers Hall of Fame. No one deserves it more than you. We love you, Mr. Porton. <laughs> From James Monroe High School, Gary Axelbank for BXNY. That didn't bring a smile to the faces. I, I got a little choked up myself. <laughs> um, um, Sarah, Sarah, you saw yourself in there. That must have been something. Maybe maybe you could come up with uh, just a, a thank you or something. Now, we will say he was in Kate House, and even at the age of 76, he was still doing programs with senior citizens. He was whizzing around there in a wheelchair. <laughs> I mean, you know, he started the Kindness Club. The Kindness Club. You see, yeah. we all know that. <laughs> anyway, Sarah will give you each a chance just to make a statement, and, and I will thank him also. He was my dear friend, my family friend, and I have so much respect for him. But go ahead, Sarah, and then Janelle. Well, he taught us how to love, how to love students. And when you love a student, the student carries it and gives that love back to others. And through, because of Mr. Porton, I'm a teacher now and I'm able to love my students in a way that he did. I stimulate their senses too, with trips, with outdoor excursions that include um, camping, things like that. And wow. so when you feed into someone and you put love into someone, they spread it out. So he will never, wow. his memory will never die and everybody will pay it forward. He had many people who loved him and his students were his family as well. Isn't that beautiful? Janelle, I'm, I'm sure you echo those mm -hmm. sentiments. We'll give you the final word. I do. Um, Mr. Porton, no, and he knew that he was loved and we loved him dearly. And like Sarah said, we were um, also his family and um, what he poured into us will continue to live on because we will continue to pour into others as he did um, for us. And um, I hope that we will um, be able to uh, continue on in his legacy in that way. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that beautiful? And there are hundreds of students who thousands who would say the same thing incredible anyway hugs to both of you uh, i i we, we all love you. tom porton may he rest in peace and mm -hmm. may all the things that he did with you wonderful young people who are now a little older uh will we'll, uh, live on thank you so much for joining us and we appreciate it thank you, guys. Thank you. all right we're, we're, we got to say goodbye we got to run we're way over time okay. we'll see you next week